Hello everyone and welcome to the second Kohi devlog. This is a series that occasionally takes a snapshot of the Kohi game engine development along the way and discusses highlights and various issues and status updates. That being said, uh, at the time of recording, we're almost to, I think, 110 episodes or so, uh, give or take, and we've got some catching up to do. So each of these devlogs that we're doing, as I mentioned last time, is going to cover roughly 10 episodes or so worth of content. This one, of course, is going to pick up where the last one left off. So this is uh, episode 001. Uh, the first one was, was uh, 000. I do want to mention that there's also not a set schedule for these. So uh, it's not like these are definitely going to come out once a month. Uh, they might come out uh, a couple times really in short succession. And then we might also have a couple months in between them, right? I'm basically going to do them as I have the free time to be able to do so. So if you're new to this series, go ahead and check out episode zero. It should be up here in the corner. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into it. So episode 12 is where we finally begin discussing graphics by detailing what the first revision of the renderer design will be. This will change several times over the course of the series, but many of the core building blocks will remain in place. Episode 13 is where we get our hands dirty and start digging into Vulcan. We discuss the steps to get a Vulcan instance stood up. There's no visual change here yet. In fact, this is a bit of a theme and getting a Vulcan renderer up and running. It's quite a lot of boilerplate code before you actually see anything drawn to the screen at all. In the next episode, we set up extensions, validation layers, and a debug logger. These provide us with a vast amount of troubleshooting capability early on, as well as throughout the entire development cycle of the renderer. We also expand on this later. In episode 15, we set up a surface for Vulcan to draw to, that's cross-platform, as well as examine the properties of physical devices or GPUs attached to the system. We utilize these properties for feature detection as well as enabling and disabling features. Episode 16 sees us set up the logical device, which can be thought of as the application's view of the physical device and an object which will be needed for pretty much everything else Vulkan from here on out. We'll also use this to set up queues, which will be used for executing commands stored in command buffers. Episode 17 is where we create the swap chain responsible for presentation of images to the surface slash screen, as well as the images themselves, which will be drawn to. We also go ahead and create the depth buffer, yet another image that is used to determine draw order, among other things, in the 3D world. Episode 18 shows the creation of a Vulcan render pass, which is used to connect the dots between all the rendering elements, if you will. Technically, render passes are optional in newer implementations of Vulkan that support the option, but this implementation currently uses Vulkan 1.2, and thus render passes are required. For compatibility purposes, I've elected to keep these for now because they would be required anyways to run on a device which doesn't support not using them. Episode 19 is where we set up command pools, which are used alongside command buffers, where commands such as draw commands are queued up to be executed by a queue later on. Next, episode 20 is where we create frame buffers in our sync objects, such as semaphores and fences. These are the last of the major building blocks to get something on the screen, or at least clearing the screen. Finally, in episode 21, we clear the screen to a nice blue color. It's the first visual update we've had in quite some time, and it's confirmation up to this point that all the parts that we've connected together are working as they should. This was a huge milestone and one that made things start to feel a little bit real. It's been a lot of work to get to this point and we'll continue to build up from here. In the next devlog episode, we'll be taking a momentary step back from the renderer to handle another part we'll need before proceeding with the renderer itself. Thank you all for watching. If you're liking this series, then leave a comment below, hit the like button, consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next one.